whilst you've been gone. By rainbow. Since we've been gone, Steve. What's been going on, mate? Well, so much has happened, doesn't it, in the world, um, you know, politics and stuff. There's been an election and the like. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant, and our producer, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I say producer, <laughs> funny, yeah. uh, yeah. Carl Pilkington. Alright. Yeah? Very good. We've been away for a while. I think uh, the last show we did was January 2004. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, nothing's changed. Nothing's changed whatsoever. Nothing's been mended. Uh, I, I, I mean, I... I'm pretty sure I threw that away in the bin <laughs> yeah, before yeah. I went, before I left. Yeah, there are some of your, uh, your old bacon rinds from that sandwich. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the spare ribs on the floor. Yeah. yeah, nothing's changed at all. Oh, I, oh no, that's not true. Um, uh, the listenership has changed. It went down slightly, didn't it, on the last Rage Hour? Well, I don't know. I, I don't know. Is that, is that what happened? Did it go down slightly, Carl? <laughs> uh, a little bit, I think. I don't think everyone gets new listeners because yeah. I think what happens is, the reason it goes down just very slightly each time is that their old listeners die. Yeah. Uh, you know, Definitely. old Cure fans dying of- Yeah, you know, smack addictions. <laughs> yeah. Gout. Yeah. <laughs> Gout. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, well I've never- I haven't listened to this, um, station for a year and a half, so it's a, that's increased by one. <laughs> yeah. Which is qu probably quite a high percentage. <laughs> exactly. Um, so- I, uh, Well I- I mean, I suppose that, that my question I suppose to you, Rick, would be, you know, why now? Why- why have you come back now? You know, bored, I was a bit bored of sitting at home, <laughs> right, you know. okay. Yeah. Because we're just here for six weeks. Six weeks. Um, well, we're standing in for Adam and Joe, aren't we? Yeah. Mm. Yeah? Oh, the tables have turned, I remember when they were standing in for us, but, uh, Yeah, um. I don't know. <laughs> but I, I mean, the only reason I'm here is because, um, my, um, my housekeeper cleans, um, between one and three. Oh, right, that's um, a good idea. So I just want to get out of the house. And, uh, are they, are they listening to XFM? Well, no, she doesn't speak English. <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay. I'm not made of money, Rick. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I can help out, you know, a, a young immigrant lady, then, um, then I will do. And, and, and there are so many things I can do for her, in so yeah. many ways. Yeah. Um, but her, you know, picking up my old tea towels and stuff is, uh, is ideal. So that's why I'm here. But I just, I'm, all I'm worried about is I think people kind of associate with the name Ricky Gervais, they associate a certain level of quality. You mm. know, your live stand-up DVDs, there's a level of quality, you've put a lot of work into them, you've mm. honed it. The TV work you've done, likewise. Mm. Should people expect the same from the radio show? Definitely not. No. Definitely not. Th those things that, you know, you, you sit down, well, you know, you sit down, we write them for a long time, write them for a year maybe, then film them, and we worry about everything. This is, uh, I really, I'm not even sure I'm talking into the mic at the moment. <laughs> I, I was actually doodling as you saw there. Yeah. I'm eating a sandwich as we speak. Yeah. You know, that, you know, if you, although we do like music, that is true. That's we absolutely should, right. Should we play some great I'm records? Play a great record now. I mean, like, that's, it's, it's that kind of um, musical insight that I'm looking for throughout this show. Really. <laughs> I it's sound like Doctor Fox, then, didn't I? Just it's find a, some of your tastes and wants and needs. Yeah. Doctor Fox, what's happened to him? Is he off air now? Because that's one of the reasons I put no effort into this radio show. Because uh, you know, uh, we we go to the Golden Globes the same month. We do nothing at the Sony, and. Dr. Fox actually said, that's because you're not very good. I like the fact that the uh, Dr. Fox criticisms really hit you quite hard. <laughs> you know, you really took <laughs> I'm still hard. talking about it a year <laughs> yeah, later. Exactly. You know, you've got yeah. to let it go, Rick. <laughs> yeah. But then again, you know, he's a medical man and... Yeah, well, uh, you know, you've got to, you've got to believe him a bit. his opinion. You know, exactly, yeah. Right. Yeah, I could have done without the rectal examination. I think he could have just said, <laughs> You're not very good. <laughs> exactly. Try and enunciate. No, I know what the problem is. Oh, let's have a look down here. <laughs> exactly. Carl had to, you had to, um... Uh, go, 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 go to one of those, um, well clinics, didn't no, you? No, I'm gone. Why? Because I'm, I'm not happy with it. What? I'm not happy with the whole... Well, it's just... Do people know what them places places are? We'll give you have a you, whole... Have you heard of them? Yeah, I've had one, so, yeah. They they, they, take, they check everything. Which, you know, Suzanne, my girlfriend, was like, uh, you know, you're thirty odd now. <laughs> uh, when was the last time you went to the doctors? And I haven't been for ages, because... I don't- No, I never go. I never go. Unless I think I'm, I'm honestly gonna die there, I'm in agony. Like, they can always find something. Jane made me go to one of those well things, yeah, those yeah. boot things where they do the- it's- yeah, cut around a quid and they give you a com complete head to toe, don't they? But- but head, head to bottom <laughs> is what it is. The uh, they do the old uh, finger up the arse thing. Now what is that testing for? Well I like that he said it quietly, because he's on the radio, you not- you can't say arse. Yeah. I say it quietly. <laughs> say it quietly, it. yeah, yeah. Arse. Yeah, arse. That's what um, our mistake was, because we got, um, a complaint up how, didn't we, for saying, and I'm talking about a male chicken here, which is a cock, as you know, yeah, and we cool. said that word, right? So if we'd have gone, cock, <laughs> we'd have probably gotten away with it. You can get away with murder. If you just, yeah. If you just whisper it very So go on then, yeah, so. Go on so, then, you, so yeah, yeah, no, I just, uh, <laughs> I just, uh, I'm not going, because I'm not having that done, I don't understand what, what they're gonna find up there, that's. <laughs> 
Your what, head? No, but <laughs> why can't I just- I mean, it's the heart that I worry about the most. <laughs> Do you mean that in a, in a kind of romantic yeah. sense? No, no, I mean like, you know- if They would have to have a long finger, wouldn't they, to check yeah. that out. They go, is something wrong with your left ventricle? Yeah. Now, this thing about- this thing about the, uh, doctors, they, they hold your testicles and they make you cough. Yeah, they don't hold the testicles anymore, they just put it sort of like by the side of them. And what's that testing for? I, I, I don't know, I think it's something to do with, uh, if you've got something wrong with your, your diaphragm or something like that, you can't- you can't do it when they press there. I don't know, it, it shows you, them something. So you it's can't, not- you it's can't, not doctors having a quick feel. Mm. But so you can't- <laughs> <laughs> Look at, Well they- well that's good because- do you remember when Carl said he's gonna die of cancer? And I said, why? He said, I don't check me balls. I said, why? He said, I don't like the feel. <laughs> so they feel it for you, they- they feel them for you and you can- you can just relax, shut your eyes and think of England. Well don't mess with them. What do you mean? You can do more damage messing about with them, just leave them. Cause it's two anyway. You can afford to lose one. Yeah. I don't think that's the point. I think the, the point is it- it sort of s spreads, doesn't it? You know, it-, it you've gotta mm. check the- I mean, I'm not saying, you know, if- don't- don't do it, cause they spend a lot of money saying to people, you know, have a quick feel if you've got the time, what have you. <laughs> but I, I'm not- I, I'm- I don't worry about it. Leave it. Leave it alone. <laughs> why? why, out of interest, why do doctors stick fingers up your eyes? Check the prostate. Check the prostate? Yeah. Cause if it's swollen, it's- it could, yeah, it, it could, you know, lead to all sorts of problems. Again, they're not having a laugh, Carl. <laughs> they're not going, hang on, look at this bald little mank fella. But there's no uh, nice way- I'll feel his balls, stick a finger up his ass, and send him home. <laughs> 300 quid, please, <laughs> on you go. What about me art? It's fine. And they're all laugh- they're all laughing. Roger, Jeff, stand behind that two-way mirror. <laughs> yeah, 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 what's this? <laughs> no, I'm uh, not going anyway. So. Really, you're not going because you don't want- No, I'm not happy with that. It doesn't even matter, it's not the fact he's a stranger. If it was someone who I knew, it'd be just as bad. <laughs> Imagine that! At a dinner party! Oh god! Oh look, hello, hello, Roger and Selena. Um, do you mind? Roger, do you mind? <laughs> Would you allow any of the celebrity doctors to do it though? Dr. Dre, uh, Dr. Fox, Fox, any of those? Doctor Who. I just don't understand in this day and age. <laughs> Would you allow Christopher Eggleston to stick his big right, northern finger up your- Do you want a song on anyway? <laughs> what? <laughs> Beanie Siegel, I love this track. Oh, it's very urban for you, Rick. Beanie Siegel, feel it in the air. Beautiful track, isn't it? Well, it's wonderful. On a lovely summer's day like this as well, Rick. It's the yeah. ideal choice. Well, yeah. on that one. well, I'm a little bit worried that if there are any new listeners, very <laughs> unlikely, yeah. that, that that they may not, you know, be familiar with um, our work, but they might not know the the wonderful little gem that we found just there, a little rough diamond in the in the mud. Yeah. Carl Pilkington. Yeah. Just working here, just working away as a little producer, a little sound man, the wasn't prune. he? Yeah. And he was, uh, and we gave him his opportunity, didn't we? Mm. It's like Cinderella, wasn't it? Yeah. And he, and he grasped that opportunity, didn't you, by the horns? And three years later, you're exactly where you started. <laughs> so good work. Got Mondays off now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought maybe a, a, a useful way of introducing the mind of Carl Pilkington. Yeah. To um, our new you, audience. You use that term loosely. Yeah. When I say mind, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought what, 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 Look at his face! Oh. There is a website, have you got the oh, website Oh, there's address? a website that we just found. Right, Carl, what is the address? If you are unfamiliar with what Carl looks like- Please um, log on to this now. Log on to this website and stay tuned, but listen, log on to the website because you'll see Carl's face, you'll see some of his pearls of wisdom. Yeah, now what's it? What's the address, Carl? Uh, freewebs.com. www. Yeah, freewebs.com. Freewebs.com. Yeah, it's forward slash. Yeah. Uh, the dash K dash man forward slash. The K man. It's okay. complicated. It is, yeah. Do it again, say it again. But get a pencil right. now, they've all got a pencil now. Freewebs.com. One word. Yeah. Slash the dash K dash man forward slash. Now when you say dash, is it, is it a dash or is it, is is it, it an the middle, underscore? Is it, is it underscore, is it, is it in the middle of the word or is it hover in the middle of the word or is it at the, is it at the bottom? It's just- just a line and that. Yeah, I know, but is it an underscore or is it a dash? Try both. <laughs> <laughs> he- he copied it down! Have, have a go. <laughs> <laughs> That's the oh. sort of level we're talking about! Well, already you've got some insight into the mind of Carl Pilkington. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. But I thought what, what we should do is we could hide <laughs> that. <laughs> Imagine that! Imagine Bill Gates! <laughs> yeah, or a teacher. <laughs> in an exam. Hot <laughs> <Pop> down both. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, multiple choice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, okay. But anyway, yeah, if, if you're a reader of the uh, Weekend Guardian, you'll know there's this thing called the Q&A, which they, they give to uh, celebrities and thinkers and the like. Mm. And basically, it's a series of questions they pose to each pe people each week, and it's the same questions, and it gives a little insight into people's minds, the way mm. they think. So what I'm particular, what thinker philosopher is in this week's? <laughs> um, it's the lead singer of Feeder. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> you're in good company, Carl. Um, no, I like Feeder. No, fine. I love Feeder. So, Carl, I'm just going to fire a couple of these questions at you. We'll maybe drop them in throughout the course of the show, just to try and get a sense of who you are. Mm. Um, so, here's the first up, first question. All right, you got your thinking head on? Go on. <laughs> you wurzel. What is your idea of perfect happiness? Uh, what, for me, or...? <laughs> Already? <laughs> no, Ronnie Corbett. <laughs> no, no, but, but what do you mean, like, what will make me happy, or yeah. for everyone to be happy? No, what would make you happy? Maybe that is that. Maybe that's the answer. Y your idea of perfect happiness is to everyone being happy. I don't know. What's your? What would make you totally? Unlikely. Yeah, happy? But I imagine it's a twenty-four-hour monkey channel <laughs> on like the sky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, go on. A never-ending popsicle. Right, go on. Uh, I, I, I don't think I've had it yet where I'm like really, really happy with anything. Carl, I've never seen you really happy. No. No, but um, when have you been at your happiest? Probably, I like, I like sort of fish fingers, potato cakes and beans for a, for tea. Yeah. And you're, then, not, you're not, you're not, yeah. Right, well let's move on, we'll come back to that one. <laughs> you know, I don't think you're aiming high enough for, uh... Well what would your answer be for that? When are you happy? What would make you happy? Um, I, I wouldn't have the, I'd have fish fingers, but I probably <laughs> wouldn't have the potato cakes. Yeah. I'd have fish fingers and beans. <laughs> See, I'm not a huge fan of the beans. <laughs> really? So um, your idea of... Um, perfect happiness is probably just fish fingers, is <laughs> just it? Just fish fingers. Okay, good. Alright, second question. What is your greatest fear, Carl? Mm, going to the doctors. Okay. So, more, so, so presumably, uh, ill health and mortality. Uh, That's how you no, do it, you see. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't <laughs> any particular doctor? <laughs> I don't want to live forever either. No, I just want no. a good innings. I just want to get to about 80, 83, 84. <laughs> 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 so specific! Yeah, okay. Which living person do you most admire? Uh Which person throughout any time in history do you most admire? Winston Churchill's pretty good. You like yeah, him? Yeah, it's very good. Yeah, Why? Right. Good answer. Because if it weren't for him, we'd be talking German. I'm not that good at that. So. <laughs> That's, he's not that good at that. I love that, that, that even if the Nazis won, right, in 1945, and we'd be now speaking German, he still wouldn't be that good at it. Although he's not good at English, so I suppose, yeah, I suppose he's, <laughs> I suppose that's true, isn't it? Yeah. All right, well, here's one, here's the final one for now. Do you believe in capital punishment? Uh, That's not it in Dr. Fox over the head with a stick. <laughs> depends, depends what for, doesn't it? Go on. Oh, if it's something bad. And, uh, well, I assume it would be. <coughs> they don't, they don't, they don't kill what, people what, now what, for uh, parking what, illegally. What, but what sort of, what sort of thing are you talking about? What sort of punishment? Capital punishment. Yeah, I know, but what is that? What, what, what are you talking about? Well, guillotine, hanging. Uh, uh, hanging's a bit bad. Yeah. Uh, can be fatal, can't it? What do you mean hanging's a bit bad? It's just. It's not, all bad. Why, mm, why, why should the state kill someone? Because prisons are getting a bit busy, aren't they? Brilliant. Okay. I just, what's what's the point in keeping them, you know, people people around? Well, what's the point in killing them? Just because it's like, right, that's that done. Who's who's next? <laughs> you know what, I mean? <laughs> what can you do with someone if they're mental? <laughs> Employ them on a radio show. Uh, yeah. Play a right. Card. Next question. Play a record. Okay. We'll come back to the questions. Of, uh, what do you want? What have you got in here? Rick, I know you're a massive fan of the Thorns. Yeah. But maybe you're less familiar with the uh, different elements of the Thorns mm. solo work. No. Is no. A track from Matthew Sweet. Oh yeah. <laughs>
XFM 104.9, Matthew Sweet, and a song called In My Time, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. It was great, that. Yeah, just asking Carl some of these uh, Q&A questions. This might be my idea of prep happiness, being in a room with Carl Pilkington. Yeah. Just what I watch him, I just watch him look around, when you're talking, uh, he looks at you, and it's like, you know when the owners say, it's like the cat can understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it's, it's like, he's on the edge look. of that. He's yeah. on the edge of that. You think he can, and I know he understands the words, but I don't think he understands the full impact. He never, whenever you say something to him, it might be some, you know, a revelation or some. He always picks up on the wrong side. You go, well, that's not the important bit. Do you know what I mean? He always goes. It's a bit like having a fourteen-year-old French exchange student. Yeah. You know, their, <laughs> yeah. their English is not amazing. They roughly yeah. understand you, but they're trying to piece together what you're saying. Exactly, but it, it's great. You see, um, the thing about Carl is, and d don't take this th the wrong way. I like him st because he's stupid mm. in a way. Mm. <laughs> no, I'm not being funny, but do you know what I mean? But. Even though I think he is considered uh, stupid, some of the things he says, I think borders on the, I don't know what the PC term is, the retarded. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, yeah. Carl? Anything in particular you're thinking of, though, Rick, when you think of the, Well, uh... um, he was talking to me the other day, because I'm, I'm trying to write a show called Science, and he's sort of, uh, gonna help me out with some of the research, and I wanna, I want him to do some on the DVD for it, right? And, uh, he, um, was talking about it. And uh, he was talking about, um, he says that uh, in the future, they reckon we'll be able to, soon, he said, they'll be able to take us into space and it's going to cost us £150,000. He said, what's the point? There's nothing up there. He said, the, when they went up there, right, he said, when Louis Armstrong went <laughs> in 1966, <laughs> right, he said, it was nothing there. So there was him, a fella called Buzz, there was one and third bloke that didn't even get out of the spaceship. He said he went all that way, he didn't get out to stretch his legs. How good can it be? Forget it. That's him summing up yeah. space don't exploration. Don't, don't, don't you agree with that? What, what's the point in going up there? Because you're Are we talking about the finger in the arse again here? Or it's space? No, what, what is the point in going to- Because you're expanding, you know, human endeavour, aren't you, in the human uh, understanding of the world and the universe. It's like, what else are we going to do as a civilization, as a, as a people, if we're not constantly searching and, you know, and, and reaching out into the far distance? But there's nothing there, though. I know some people you grew up with that haven't left their street, but that, that's not everyone. But what is it? What do you mean there's nothing there? That what, what, what has got to be there for it to be a worthwhile? Like, just something. What, I mean, like, to be honest, What I would you be I happy with finding out on the moon? video? Just, just- just something. I don't think they looked hard enough anyway when they got there, because they seemed to get out, have a bit of a dance about, and then they came straight back. And I sort of think, you know, did they look properly? It's not a day trip, is it? But what, what I mean is- they took is, that car out there, didn't they, and drove around a bit? Yeah, but only a little bit. What I mean is, say if an alien landed in, in Africa, there's not much there, so they'd go, Pff. What yeah, do you mean there's not much that. there? Well, it's a bit barren, isn't it? Well, Africa, just in general. Well, anywhere the, the, like that, the, the desert or whatever, what I'm saying is, it's got have a good look round. Probably the, uh, where all life came from and uh, uh, probably half a million yeah, species of I, animals I just live there. buildings and that and stuff. Oh, just, buildings. Well, just stuff. Yeah. I mean, did they look properly? Or did they just land, get out, go, oh, a bit dusty or whatever, right, let's go back. I just think it's a bit pointless. Especially when we haven't done everything there is to do here. Go I mean, on. Well, I, I don't know, but I'm sure there is stuff. <laughs> that needs sorting out. Well, there's, I know the place that there's, there's no medical man has been. <laughs> In this room. Yeah. There's, there's, a, there's, there's definitely an unexplored, uh, cavern. <laughs> sitting right, right. Front. all right, Steve, would you go to the moon if someone said there's a space? He doesn't march at a concert because he's scared his glasses to fall off. Of course he wouldn't go to the moon. That They'd spin cool. him round in training, his glasses would come off, and that'll be it. He'd, yep. he'd feel sick. My worry is I'm not sure I'd get- I'd have- because I- would I be able to wear him under the helmet? <laughs> Imagine him! Like, I went- I went paintballing once, and I had to wear the glasses <laughs> underneath the mask, and of course it was a bit hot weather, it was all- all- it was steamed up in there. Still, I couldn't see anything, I got shot straight away, I was out of the game, it was pointless. <laughs> you know, it cost me like eight quid. Yeah. You don't have to be that fit anyway, do you? You're only sort of sat there. Well, not, uh, well, yeah, but what, what are you talking about? Think of G-force alone and weightlessness. Of course you've got to be, what? Yeah. I what? think when you said think of G-force, he thought of G-4. <laughs> the, uh, follow-up winners in Pop Idol. I could see it as his, as his eyes glazed over. A couple uh, more quick questions for you, Carl, just to try and get inside your mind. Um, what do you, uh, what is your greatest regret? Uh, probably... I didn't do that well at school, did I? So I'm, I'm trying to like learn stuff now. Yeah. 
But it's not, that not guy. mentally. But, no, yeah. He reckons he's learnt more in the last three months than he ever has in the rest of his life reading a couple of science books I gave him. Well, that's impressive. We'll test you on that later on. Yeah. What keeps you awake at night? Um, well, I live in sort of central London, don't I? So it's <laughs> brilliant. Noisy. Traffic and that. I yeah. think we're thinking more. Sort more of what, what, what fears that. have you got? What worries do you do you do you, do you ponder the expansion of the universe? Do you worry I don't think about it? Point. There's no point, is there? Because there's nothing I can do about it. So what, with you, it's the, the what the the little Chinese fellow across the road. Just 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 stuff that that I've got to sort out. You know, any bills or anything. I don't worry about the world ending or anything. What, what's the point in that? That's <laughs> true. That is no, true. I can't do anything about it. <laughs> I always think that people with more sort of intelligence have the world on their shoulders because they, they're worrying about stuff that's miles away. Whereas I'm like, you know, I'm happy if if the sun's out. It's like, oh, it's a nice day. Yeah. yeah. I don't what worry about wars and stuff going on because there's now I can do. What would you do if there was a, a war that, uh, that maybe there was? What here? Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> okay. a good thing. Yeah, it's a good thing, isn't it? Yeah. We're gonna get a Sony award this oh. year. Carl, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to be back, isn't it? We're doing Rockbusters in a bit, what? Have we- have we got Rockbusters? Well. Ah, hallelujah! <laughs> I'll tell you this, new listeners- <laughs> well, new listeners. The new on. listeners won't believe their luck when Hold they hear on. Rockbusters. We've got Rockbusters, have we got- well, dare I say it, have we got monkey news, Carl? Uh, well I've been away, haven't I? So, I've sort of got a few things that I've- I've read about roughly, yeah. but I don't know the full ins and outs. You're joking, cos usually you do your research quite well, don't you, when you get uh, off Ann and over and read the top line. Uh, so what are you saying though? Are you saying that there's- it's kind of monkey news? Well, we'll- we might have time to do something later. Well, we're gonna, we've Listen, got to have him- I love it when he teases us for these monkey news. <laughs> we've we've yeah. had emails about that- that website address. Oh yeah. Uh, it was- it was a- a-, a what's her name? A underscore. An underscore. Okay, so first. give it out one more time. Now go to this to find out about Carl Pilkerton. Someone's putting a lot of effort. It's a really good website. There's some great pictures of Carl. It's, well, they're not great. They're just, uh, <laughs> freewebs.com slash the underscore k underscore man slash. Okay, forward slashes all the, all the way. Yeah. Except yeah. the underscores. Is there the end of course, yeah. This is interminable. Isn't it interminable <laughs> giving out email addresses? I know, yeah. Rub, it's so boring. <laughs> I know, yeah. Oh dear. Is, mm -hmm. there, do, is he enjoying the show? Uh, it just says, um, I love spending two hours on a Saturday listening about fingers up asses, doctors squeezing testicles and making you cough. Uh, have you got any news on the airy Chinese kid? <laughs> so. Well, when, when you say it like that, some of the stuff we cover does sound a little bit of, uh, you know, drivel. Mm. Well, sometimes yeah. Carl was worried. Carl was worried about swearing because we were talking about finger ass and that. He's generally worried, and, and I, I don't have a problem with swearing. Although I understand why you can't say certain words on radio; it might be offensive. People aren't listening. I mean, you know, the f word, the c word, and all those. But when they bleep it out, when they bleep it out in a record, they bleep out the vowel. Mm. So in the f word, they bleep out the u. So it goes for beep, right? What? What? So they go. It's not offensive. I didn't hear the vowel. Presumably, yeah. So if you change the vowel, it's not. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, in the C word, could I say, um, could I talk about the, the philosopher Immanuel Kant? Well, you can talk about Immanuel Kant because he's one of the great thinkers of, of all time. So, Kant is not an offensive word because the vowel is right. different, okay. is it? Leave it, leave it then. No, do you know what I mean though? But I, I don't no, see but how it can be offensive. You can't, it it's can't be, can't it? He's a thinker, he's a philosopher, his name is, his okay. name is Kant, that is his actual right. name. Yeah. I think it, it comes from a long line of... Kant's from what I can- oh, he hasn't changed his name, I think his father, his grandfather- oh, yeah, they're yeah, all- Yeah, they've got German people- Oh, well, Germany is, I assume, full of Kant's. Well, I, I mean, yeah. Yeah. What? Well, so, what- what else were So we can change the vowel, so could I say, um, could I say, uh, uh- Probably not. Oh, what if I change two words? What if I said cump? C-U-M-P, now that's not offensive at all, is it? That can't be offensive. So I could say, you fulking cump. Right. Yeah. Okay. What, I, well, I, I need a schnit. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. Wonka, Willy right. Wonka. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. No, that's a good one. Willy Wonka. Yeah. W yeah you got, although yeah. Willy is Willy offensive? Could you say Willy? It's tricky. Willy it's tricky. Willy Wonka, and his and uh, Willy Wonka and his falcon right. cumps. Yeah. That would be fine. That would be it? absolutely fine. Is that all right then, Carl? Have you got any other questions or anything, Steve? <laughs> well. Uh, I, I, it's not so much a question, but it's something that I think might be of interest to you, Carl. Um, I was reading about this in the paper, and I know how fascinated you are by people of the Japanese persuasion. Um, two elderly men mm -hmm. found on a remote island are believed to be Japanese soldiers in hiding since 1945, desperate to go home. Diplomats from Tokyo are investigating the claims of these men, who are 87 and 83. Mm. <laughs> what? What? What are you thinking there? 
Well, no, go on. I know what you're thinking. Go on. Say what you're thinking. I'll do that old, though. Why? Why? Say why. I don't, I don't want to. Just leave it. Leave, Carl's leave got on. a theory. Well, I, I, th I mean, I, I don't think, I don't think th this is fine. It's, it's, I, I'd say that Carl's views don't reflect the views of XFM, mm. right? Carl's got a theory that Oriental people don't age well. Sure. Uh, let, let Carl- yeah, but, but that annoys that me the way- yeah, but I think- what? People will probably agree with me, but for some reason- well, the first time I said that, I wasn't even worried about it, but now, because of the reaction of people- <laughs> What? It, I don't understand- I don't know why I can't say that. What's Be your theory? Explain your theory, in a nutshell. Just like you don't see a, 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 a you know, sort of a, a thirty-three-year-old Chinese person. <laughs> <really either. laughs> no, but, but at the same time, you what know, do you mean you don't yeah, see a thirty-three-year-old Chinese? I'm not having a go. Person. At the same time, you don't see that many fat ones either. So, in a way, that's that's good news. Nobody would be upset about that. But what do you mean? But you your news isn't bad news because it's not true. But wait, stop, stop, stop. What do you mean you don't see a thirty-three-year-old Chinese person? I don't understand. What do you mean you don't see them? What do you see then? Sort of, you know, young, young ones, uh, and then, like, you don't see that middle ground. <laughs> I don't know what this theory's based on! So you see old ones and then you see, uh, and you see yeah. young ones, but you never see any in between? Yeah. What uh, do you mean? So what's the oldest, what's, okay, what's the oldest Chinese person you've seen before the age of 33? How old do you think? About 22. 22. So you've seen lots of 22 year olds. So you've seen range from babies to 22 year old tw uh, Chinese people. Yeah. That's fact, okay? And then what gap do you miss out? What, 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 when, when do they pop back up on the radar for you? What age has a Chinese person got to be to be older than that? About 49. <laughs> <laughs> They're so specific. What, what do you mean? When you say they don't age well, what do you mean they don't age well? You think that, you mean that middle aged ones look old? Because you think at 23, when they're 23, they're like, happy birthday to you. <sighs> And they look up and oh jeez, it's fifty two. What what do you mean? No, I just I just mean they don't age that well. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't know what it is in them, but they just don't you, all right then, here's here's a question. You tell me of a Chinese person on the telly who's about thirty two. Well, tell me of a Chinese person on the telly first. <laughs> G give us the great gamut of uh, Chinese talent um, currently on British TV, right? And I'll, and I'll, I'll pick and choose. Go on then. Bruce Lee. Hmm. How Andy. long has he been dead, Bruce Lee? Seventies, wasn't it? And not 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 really on the telly much, was he? Okay. What what age was he when he died? Thirty-three, I think. Well, I would have <laughs> never guessed that. Well, what do you think? How old do you think he was? Probably about. 42. What, you know Burt Kwok? Yeah, he's old. Yeah. Do you remember the Pink Panther films? No. Okay. He wasn't that old in them, because it was 60s, 70s. But how old did he look, though? If, if, if he walked in and someone said, you never guess how old he is, what would you have said? <laughs> right then, there's my point then. There's my point. I have to say, I've been listening to you two talk, and I like the idea that there's people who've been waiting 18 months for some of this. <laughs> For the, for the Kant discussion, the, uh, <laughs> Orientals. I, 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 someone's emailed in. Yeah, so you've got to tell yeah, the no, no, listeners that. Now, I'm telling them now, I'm doing it. Someone's emailed in from Tokyo, mm. saying that he's getting married in a few months mm. to a Japanese woman, she's 27, <laughs> just want to know how long I've got so she starts looking old. <laughs> well, how long do you reckon, according to your theory? Mm, about, probably about four years. <laughs> about four years and that. So, <laughs> what would you advise him to get out now, or? Well, have some good sort of wedding pictures done and that. <laughs> oh, God! God! It's not true. The theory's not true. Well, we'll see. We'll see, won't we? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Great. In four years' time, he's going to send the picture, going, "Oh, you're right, Carl. Look, she looks like a prune." What? He's going to suddenly start saying, "It's go. It's not true. It's not going to happen." It's that thing, though, isn't it, of looking at her mum. <laughs> There's a lot of truth in that, isn't there, that you should, shouldn't really meet up with your girlfriend's sort of parents and that. Sure. Because no. you just sort of get a little taste of what's to come mm. and what have you. Then what's to come with yours? Uh, it's a good job I didn't meet her early on. <laughs> no, no. You're gonna be in such trouble! No, they don't listen, it's alright. Really? Well, it's Suzanne right. does, doesn't she? She'll probably be out. Really? But she, she knows. She's got some sense. <laughs> yeah, when you get back. Yeah. You went on holiday with them, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I've been, we've been on since then now, haven't we? I don't think so. Yeah, I went on holiday 
last week, been away, but that was just me and Suzanne talking oh, about that later. Yeah, okay. Oh, that, that, that's coming up. Plus, of course, Rockbusters, the return of Rockbusters. Let's yeah, start let's Rockbusters. Rockbusters. Let's now. do Rockbusters. Let's get it rolling, because we've got- I have got some amazing prizes. I went to the Americas and I brought back gifts. Not your tobacco and your potatoes, but brilliant prizes. Now, quite seriously, these are not the usual tat. You will win some tat for Rockbusters, okay? We've got DVDs, uh, CDs, uh, uh, things like that, right? But the winner- of Rockbusters today, we'll go through to a chance to win the prizes in the- in week six. We're only here for six weeks, by the way. This is our first of six shows. Thank God for that. Yeah. And, um, I got- I went to- I went to do The Simpsons, uh, last weekend, and I've got, um, a drawing here, an original drawing of Homer by Matt Groening. See that? Look at that. Uh, as Homer there, your pal Matt Groening, May the 18th, 2005, and Homer's saying, I love Carl because he's stupid like me. And that's going to be framed, original drawing. Uh, that is worth, a, I think, a lot, but I've promised Matt Groening that it will not go on eBay. So please, I hope it goes to a fan. Um, I've also got a rare Spinal Tap poster, uh, met with Christopher Guest, and he signed that, Nigel Tufnell. Um, so, uh, fans of Spinal Tap and The Simpsons, possibly the two greatest things ever, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, also, uh, my friend Rob, who did flannels with me, has drawn us three as flannels. There's Steve there, a little gog lanker. There's me there, a little bloke dumplant, and little Carl Pilgerton, Pink Floyd numbskrunt. And these are all, these are going to be framed. So some very nice prizes. And I got a little surprise for you. Obviously, I met Homer. Um, press that little button there. Listen to this. Hi, this is Homer Simpson. I like Carl and his perfectly round bald head. If you put three holes in it, it looks just like my bowling ball. Brilliant. Actual proof that you've uh, met the people themselves, that the prizes are bona fide and genuine. But don't enter this week's Rockbusters thinking you're going to win those prizes automatically. No. This week you just win the usual tat. What is the but, tat, Steve? Well, we'll talk about that shortly. Okay. But you go forward for. to the big, uh, the big showdown, the big final competition in week six, where you get the chance to win those. All quite one person wins prizes. all those beautiful so just uh, everyone collectible the prizes. Yeah, everyone. Yeah, the winners of each week go into the draw. What is Rockbusters, Carl? Uh, we've wet their appetite. I think play a record and maybe some wonderful adverts and then come back with Rockbusters. It's that kind of teasing that has made this a potential award-winning show. Bronze, I think, next yeah. year. Can we just swap that round and do ads and the song? Oh, uh, whatever way suits you, mate. Go on. <laughs> XFM 104.9, Magic <laughs> Numbers, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Well, I'm a little bit worried. I've just got to warn the listener, if we suddenly just go off air, right, it's because champagne is pouring down a hole where there's loads of wires into the desk. Cause Steve, yeah, getting ready that. to open this champagne, right? Just took that wire thing off, just put it there. Of course, cause it's warm. It just it exploded everywhere. Yeah, I should explain now. I didn't bring in champagne to toast our <laughs> return to the radio. I mean, I'm not an idiot, but um. Actually, uh, from Focus PR, Ashley has rather nicely sent us some uh, Lindauer sparkling wine, and I'm just trying some, and uh, it's really quite refreshing on this uh, summer's day. So if you're perhaps working for some kind of PR agency, you know, or any kind of company, and you want to send us stuff which you want us to shamelessly promote on air, then feel free to do that. Uh, so you're just, just looking for free stuff? Yeah, I mean, you know, um, electrical goods. Um, oh, okay, it's not just like champagne Definitely stuff. Definitely not. Because I was going to say, if other champagne companies, what's that champagne company called that they sent us That's free? Uh, Lindauer sparkling wine, which I imagine is available now. <laughs> yeah, so other champagne companies feeling jealous could send you some and you'd, you'd mention it. I don't want to exclude anyone from this. You know, anyone <laughs> is welcome to send anything in. Um, Brilliant. And I, as I say, I'm particularly interested in, in um, sort of designer goods. Okay. Um, you know, the Apple Mac people, they're welcome to sure. send anything in. Sure. Now, what's annoying about that champagne opening like that is that, as you know, I brought my camera in. Um, uh, and I wanted to film you opening that onto Carl's head, got the cork. Rick, I've got another bottle. Have you ever- I don't want you to miss out on oh, an yeah. like that. That's a bit of a waste of champagne, like opening two bottles. But Carl, would you mind, cause I, cause that would have made a cracking noise against your head, that cork going off. And uh, cause it's such a lovely, bald little sort of dome. Mm. Yeah. Um, put your head, we'll put your head right down, yeah? yeah? It'll open it, we'll see what the cork does and I'll film it mm. for, uh, like a website or something. Maybe we'll make that the finale of today's show. That'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Um, sponsored well, well, by Linda yeah. Sparkling Water. Oh yeah, the sound, the sound of a <laughs> cracking cork against Carl's skull. Sponsored by Linda. <laughs> sponsored by Linda. Available now. <laughs> great. Right, we're doing Rockbusters then. Oh, okay. <laughs> now you, you should explain briefly what the concept is, Carl, because there might be a few new listeners. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's blockbusters. Right, go on then. <laughs> well, no. it's not. It's not blockbusters. No, because they were real clues, that weren't was, they? Yeah, that was actually. He music. says they're a cryptic clue. It's not cryptic. Yeah. Well, it's what am I? It's like what am I thinking? This competition is like what number am I thinking of? Rick, just calm down for a second. Let me explain basically what the concept is. You'll remember some of the greats from the past. Yeah. Um, basically, uh, you give some vague clue. Is that right, Carl? And from that, we're supposed to deduct which band or artist you're thinking of. So, yeah. for instance, there was a well, there was one. The West Indian fella spinning a fish round his head. And that was Detroit Spinners. The Trout Spinners. Yeah, Detroit, Detroit, spinners, Detroit, Detroit spinners, spinners. Yeah. yeah. There's also what happens if you fall over into a puddle in Texas? What? Wet knee Houston. Wet yeah, knee that that is Houston. the level of Carl's. That's what you're clues. working with. But could I just say there's no irony in this. Carl doesn't think this is quirky or kitsch or ironic. This he thinks these are th he thinks these could go on the Guardian crossword. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. This so, is the best I've even come up with. Yeah. Right. So the, so there's there's three of them. Yeah. Right. I give you the cryptic clue yeah, not and to cryptic. help you along. Well, it is. Yeah, uh, and really. I give you some initials of the band or the artist or whatever to help you along as well. Yeah. Uh, three well, of them. Is, this is on the text only. We don't want emails on this one. Just it's eight. the one that gets the highest or the first one to get three. The first email with three or the first one that is the the highest. So if, if no one gets the third one, which I wouldn't blame you for. Uh, so if there's like 30 people that get two, it's the first email that comes in that we pick and uh, they win a, a handful of tat, which would you like to go through? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll search out the tat in a second, I'm not sure it is, yeah. There's some DVDs and stuff in there, it's not bad, yeah, but uh, it means you go forward to the grand final in six weeks time when you're playing for all that amazing stuff Ricky's got. We've got the signed, uh, genuine exclusive drawing of Homer Simpson done by Matt Groening, um, featuring references to Carl. We've got the signed mm. Spinal Tat poster. This is big yeah. stuff you can't get anywhere else. No, it's a rare, it's a rare um, American poster signed by Nigel it's such a shame that your only chance of winning it is with this inane quiz. Uh, absolutely. It's not- it's not down to skill or anything. Uh, it's- it's just such a shame that- Let's that just do it then. Go on then. Uh, right. The first one. Go on. Uh, what you gotta remember is it's a band or an artist that- so that X of M play as well. Right? Right then, so, uh, the first one. Oh uh, yeah, cause X of M play the Detroit Spinners <laughs> and Whitney Houston all the time, <laughs> don't they? Alright, these three. Okay. Away a bit. These are- these are X of M bands. Okay, yeah. Right. Uh, if you got- if you got like a- a ball- Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I just- just- I know, the, You don't think about the cryptic clue is that every syllable counts. <laughs> he says it's different every time he says it, it there'd be <laughs> somewhere different. Look, he's- look, go on then. Go. Right, so if you get a bulb, right- A bulb what? A bulb. A bulb. What's a bulb? What's a bulb? Like a- A light bulb. A light bulb. <laughs> oh, okay. a, a light bulb. So okay, you get yeah. a bulb? You get a bulb, yeah. 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 <laughs> go on. <laughs> <laughs> he's gone. Right, go on. So you get a bulb, right? Oh, yeah, a bulb, yeah. Have you got something in your throat? What are you doing? Are you eating a gobstopper? What are you doing? <laughs> I'm gonna play a song then. No, come on! <laughs> get, get the clue out, for goodness sake! So the, the cryptic clue is, so, if you get a bulb, right, so- <laughs> <laughs> That's the beginning. Okay, great. Right, oh. right, if you get a saw, then right, if you get a bulb, like, go on. And you look after it, right, you look after that bulb, mm. and you teach it stuff, Jesus Christ. What are you doing there? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> this is extraordinary. This That's is extraordinary. Amazing. Imagine that written down in the He's telegraph. He's 18 months to get this <laughs> right? Imagine it! That's, that, that's not a clue, that's an essay! I don't know what it is! It's a conversation I don't with know yourself! Is a light bulb? A bulb like you plant in the garden? What kind of bulb does he mean? Yeah. It doesn't really matter. Oh, okay. Right, you get a bulb. Well, um, well, remember that, it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. No, okay, it doesn't no, matter. It, it does, but I can't say too much. <laughs> Right, so listen, let me just do it again. You get a bulb, right? Yeah. When it's young, you look after that bulb, yeah. you teach it stuff and what have you. What have you done there? What, what's gone on? <laughs> William! And what are the initials size? of the band? R. Right? R. R for rabbit, right? So what's the band there? Second right. one. Jesus. Uh, people have a problem doing this when they get home from, from like an, a night out drinking. Right? What, what's the problem they've got? Right? The, the initial there, K. What's the band? Right? People get in from uh, having a night out, they'll have a problem doing this. What is it? What's, what's, what's the problem? Okay. <laughs> and clue right. number three? I had a vision of that Chinese flu. Right? That's, that's C. I had a vision of that Chinese flu. You had a vision of that Chinese flu. Yeah, and, and that's the band the letter C. C. Right? So three bands there. Three cl uh, cryptic clues. Not really. Text in 83XFM. Just, just send the three, uh, Three band names that'll do, won't it? Can That'd they do a website as well? If they want, they can email in. Well, tell them what it is. Yeah, ricky.gervais.xfm.co.uk.
Just right. send it in there. Give them again uh, quickly then, Carl. Right then, so get a bulb when it's young and that. Look Brilliant. after it. Brilliant. Different. Totally different. It. Teach it stuff. Yeah. And all that. Okay. Ah. Ah. What's the band, right? Yeah. Second one. Mm. People have a problem doing this when they get home late at night. You mm. know, they've been out drinking and that. They get home. What, yeah. what problem are they going to yeah. mm. K is the initial. Mm. Third, third one. I had a vision of that Chinese flu. What do I mean? Ooh. Brilliant. C. C is the initial. Play a record. I mean, it's, it's abomination. Right, go. Embrace, glorious day on XFM 104.9. Rick, there may be listeners um, tuning in thinking they've got something better to do, for instance, switching off the radio and just staring blankly at the wall for uh, the next <laughs> half an hour, but yeah. no, because the, what they're going to miss is our grand finale oh, yeah. to this, which is of course um, sponsored by sponsored by Lindauer's, the uh, sparkling <laughs> sparkling wine solution to a hot summer's day, Yeah, uh, that we're going to be firing a cork. Did you just make that up? Yeah. Pretty good. Things, yeah. Good. Um, <laughs> They're going to be firing a cork uh, at Carl's head uh, just for the sound. I, the sound I just think it's sound. Huh? Oh. It's not happening. Yes, it's it is. It. You said no, it. no. We've said it is now. We promised it to the listeners. Yeah, come on. I'm not happy with it. Why? Because the pain. Well, I, I've never had it done, so I don't know how painful it is. Well, all the well, more reason to do it then. Yeah, we've got to try it out, haven't you? It's you're perfectly. It's 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 like oh. a little like a little cowbell yes. or wood block. He said, <laughs> I, "That's what I'm hoping for." Yeah. I'm hoping for pop. Mm. Like, uh, and I'm gonna film it for my website. Brilliant. So go to that this week, um, uh, rickygervais.com and yeah. see Carl Pilkerton getting hit. A, a high-powered cork coming out of, um, a, a Lindauer sparkling wine. <laughs> Lindauer sparkling wine. And of course, if you uh, want to send us anything in, and perhaps next week that you feel we could, um, actually, that, maybe that'd that's be great. It. That's you the. That's the. Us to do this is like interactive because a lot of people plan the show. Like Doctor Fox plans his show. We sort of come up, we riff on the. So we, that's a great idea. Send stuff in that we could harm Carl with. Yeah, we harm Carl. Harm Carl. We yeah. do a do a jingle. Harm Carl. I've and always wanted one on. of those George Foreman grills. I've oh, always wanted one of them. I know, but that's too uh, the, too much, isn't it? We could, what if we just pressed his head inside it? But we'd, what, have to, we'd have to put it on. Put, no, just, put it on. See, yeah. see, yeah. Just squeeze his oh, head inside it. I've got to do that thing with a tea towel one day. You know that thing I did with a tea towel? You put a tea towel around his head, right? Tie it. I put a wooden spoon in, and you only have to turn it like a couple of inches, and it it kills you, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it really is, yeah. yeah. So we'll be firing a cork at Carl's head. I'll be filming it for the website. Website. So that's coming That'd up be about, brilliant. Uh, about ten to three. Look forward to that. Yeah. Plus, oh, do you know what? I'm loving this. This is my. Oh, I just. Uh, oh, just being in a room with him. I just can't. I want to squeeze his head all well, the time. I'll tell you, if you're a fan of um, imbeciles and idiots, yeah, you're missing out if you're not watching Celebrity Love Island. I, I watched about well, thirty seconds of it, and I hate them. Just, uh, just desperate uh, idiots and slappers. <laughs> I, I actually. Angers me. I, I I switched on Celebrity Love Island. The first thing I thought is, where's a tsunami when you need one? <laughs> but, um, but, but seriously, but there's a guy on there. There's a guy on there. Paul, De I think his name's Paul Denan, ex of um, Hollyoaks, and he's an absolute joy because, like Carl. He's an absolute simpleton. Oh really? It's fantastic. And he was on one week, and he was talking about how he fancied lazy Lady Isabella Harvey. Oh yeah. And he said to her, he said, um, thing is, right? I really fancy her because um, she don't like reading books, and I don't like reading books. <laughs> I've got something going. But I love the idea that, they, that he's attracted to someone for something they don't do. <laughs> I know, you know. Yeah. I've never killed a kid. She's never killed a kid. What, We're gonna get what married. about sleep around? That yeah. would be a good thing to be attracted to someone for. Oh, just honestly, and Big Brother's the same. Is it? Just a load of ropey old cats. Um, uh, yeah, I know, just like a horrible, cellulited, wobbly, rice arsed fat titted tarts oh. and idiots and show offs and are there they're all they uh, they they all disgust me for a different reason. Mm. I don't know which one to hate <laughs> most, most and why. They 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 all give me a couple of reasons to hate That's them. That's what the nomination should be. Yeah. You know, nominate who do you hate the most? Because I Absolutely I you know, I thought I was gonna switch on and find that actually, you know, people like Abby Titmus and Rebecca Luz had been misrepresented presented by the press. Oh, well, the one that wanked off a pig in public? <laughs> oh, yeah, go on. Yeah. Yeah. Was that, did you say wonked off? I said wonked off a pog. Wonked off a pog. Yeah. 
<laughs> that's <laughs> great, isn't it? But I mean, so, so, so uh, it's uh, amazing, Rebecca. I mean, let's, uh, don't even get me started on Abby Titmus. Don't well, even get me. There's, there, 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 don't. Uh, I like the idea of her, uh, of her parents perhaps going to you know some kind of um, you know someone's birthday or whatever, meeting some old friends who've oh, been yeah. away living in another country. Yeah. How's young Abby? Is she still a nurse saving lives? No, she gets her tits out for a living now. Aren't you funny? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Rebecca, Lu Rebecca Lou's, um, by her own admission, I don't know if it's true, but by, but she said she sleeps with a married man, then sold her storage to Edwards, then wank wonked off a pog, <laughs> yeah. right? That's a hell of a CV, That's, isn't it? I'm looking forward to that. That is amazing. Maybe. I bet her Nan's very, very proud of her. Yeah. Uh, are they all, are they, uh, oh, God, don't, just forget it. Don't get me started. I'll be watching every night for the oh, next yeah, ten yeah, weeks. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't not. Is it? it you, my adrenaline rushes. I and you, you get. Oh God! I just tune in to see. You, uh, it's almost like you tune in to see which one gets hurt. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't Emotionally it? Emotionally scarred. But maybe one of them will come through. What we'll find out. We're always going to be exactly. We're going to find out that one of them was like re had a really, really bad child, and we feel sorry for her for yeah. a little. You know, like the Jade Goody syndrome or something. And yeah. oh God, yeah. then they release an exercise video. Oh, Carl, we got to get in, you in on this. Oh, imagine Carl in Big Brother. That would be a joy. That would be amazing. But you turned on and you hated it, didn't you? Yeah, I gave it like three minutes and it's gone. Yeah. There's always something better on though. You annoy me that like, you watch it. You may yeah. about it now, but you I watch know. it. I know. I, I know. Yeah, I know. There's always something. I, better I, I really did not watch any of Celebrity Love, and that was just too awful. I think celebrities are worse than uh, um, general public, though, to me, because if they're so desperate, they want nine little bites of the cherry, and it's it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Well, at least these people, you know, they they think that they're gonna get out of their uh, job they don't like, maybe, or you know, it's it sort of like. I, I, you know, I give them their 15 minutes, but it's, oh, God. Oh. But, but there's always something, I mean, when we went, were out the other night, Steve, right, there's a program on about, uh, a spider that's a foot long and eats chicken. No <laughs> one's, <laughs> no one's talking about it. I don't it. want to stop! What do you mean? What do you mean? No, well, I, I just, I'm sorry, I had to stand up because I thought it was going to explode. What do you mean there's a spider that's a foot when, long when and eats we, chicken? There was a program on about it, about yeah. how there's this spider in the jungle or something, but yeah. I missed it because it was out, but... No one's talking about that in the papers. <laughs> that's me. That's that's a worry. <laughs> that's about why. In case it nicks your Sunday roast. What do you mean? No, it well, no, but chicken. if it likes chicken, no, Rick. You yeah, know, yeah. in, in like two years time, taste. who knows what it might. I know. Like. It move up the evolutionary ladder. No, it start liking Carl, then humans. No, I'm not <laughs> yeah. Yeah. about the chicken bit because I eat chicken. That isn't that shocking. But the fact it's a foot long, <laughs> and and no one's it's just on on a Thursday night. No one's talking about it. <laughs> What do you expect, though? What do you expect from this? It's got a, its own PR. What do you want? What do you want this spider be to be famous? What? What? Where is it? Where is it? It's in the jungle. It's not worrying anyone, then, is it? It's not going to move. Well, why? It's not well, going to. What do you mean? What do you mean it's not going to move? Well, how is it going to get here? Is it going to get on a bus? These waves and that they come in bananas and all that. So don't worry about it. So uh, <laughs> I'm not. If you're going to be like that. Anyway, listen, um, we better line up Babushka, we better play that surely, because I know you need to analyse those lyrics. Yeah. Um, that's very important to you, I know. We've still got that cork, uh, Oh, hitting. cork on their head's gonna be great. We're gonna put his little head down and really we'll give it a fire in. Sponsored by Linda Respark. Mm -hmm. Jess's Girl by Rick Springfield. And the reason I played that is twofold. One, it's one of the prizes we're giving away. It's an album called Rock Gods, and that's with a Z, right, and an umlaut over <laughs> the O. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and it's got it's got Kiss, Judas Priest, Deep in the Darkness. It's, I mean, it really is good. It's all it's all your classic um, rock tracks. The other reason I want to play it is because I like that song. It's a great little up tempo bubblegum pop song, rock. You know, great. But it's got one of the worst lyrics in it. He's, uh, you know, he's worried about, um, bringing up the fact that he loves his girlfriend's, uh, his, his, uh, his bo uh, mate's girlfriend. And he goes, I'll bring it up, he goes, uh, I'll, I, you know, I tell her that I love her, but, um, the point may be moot. <laughs> Just <laughs> uh, you don't use that in a rock song. Know, yeah. The point may be moot. <laughs> well, I was listening to uh, yeah. Christian O'Connell on the breakfast show when he had these bounty hunter thing running a couple of weeks back, and um, I don't know what happened, but anyway, he ended up with Brian Adams in the studio doing a live session. Brian, you know, good nature or whatever, yeah. but it, you can't help but feel with Brian that he sort of he thinks that he's Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. But there's something wrong. I mean, he's got the voice and the guitar, he can play and everything, but yeah. there was a lyric and he, he he played it completely earnestly, and it was a session, and the lyric was something. It was from his recent album. And the lyric was along the lines of, and I, I'm paraphrasing, but it was along the lines of, um, uh, I, I'm sat in my hotel room, there's a knock at the door and I get kind of nervous. I'm hoping it's you, it's just room service. <laughs>
<laughs> which is extraordinary. But Christine came up with the best. Uh, it came, they finished it, and obviously Christine was thinking, what did I say? And he came up with the best answer if you've had a session that you're not entirely convinced by. He just said, quite simply, that sounded great. That's good. Which is amazing. That, yeah. Who are you complimenting there? The engineer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, the sound oh, recordist, God. what does that mean? That's great. That sounded great. Yeah, good, we got some good mics. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Brian Adams. Is it true he bought the pub next door to him and closed it down because they were noisy? I hope so. Yeah, that's a good, that's what yeah, money's yeah, yeah. for. Oh, that exactly. is what money's for, isn't Absolutely it? Absolutely right. Waking up the neighbours. That was his album, mm. wasn't it? That, that was, right. that, that was right. I don't know if that was before or after that, whether it was related or not. Well, if you but buy a house next to a pub, you know what you're gonna get. Yeah. So move, rather than ruining the fun for everyone. It's more good advice from Carl Pilkington. Carl, well, while we're talking to you, we should give these answers to Rockbusters. It's the big quiz. Um, and of course, the winner this week goes forward to play in the grand final yeah. in six weeks' time where they get to win all these amazing gifts. We signed, a signed Homer drawn, yeah. um, especially stuff, yeah. for, for Carl by Matt Groening, uh, Nigel Tufnell signed rare poster. They're, they're, they're amazing. Should we give away a sort of, uh, maybe a, a, a Original print, a behind the scenes of extras. We've got some amazing yeah, pictures filming time. extras. I was uh, thinking the other day, you know, like I'm how excited I am to be with Carl and let off corks on his head. Well, our editor, long suffering editor Nigel, we'd worked with Ben Stiller, Kate Winslet, Sam Jackson, all these people for eight weeks. It was amazing. But my highlight, I, I was that thought about it, and my highlight was dressing Nigel up, our editor, in a baby grow. Sure. It was, I planned it, we got the, 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 um, department, um, uh, costume department hired it and we just, and it looked brilliant, didn't it? Yeah. And it's just, and it's- that is BBC licence fee money <laughs> going towards you dressing up your editor. Cause you didn't pay for it. The BBC <laughs> paid for it, so that is how your money has been spent, people. But, but, it's available on the DVD again. Exactly. Nothing's wasted. Which you have to buy for <laughs> 15 quid. <laughs> Sure. So, yeah, it's, it's, a win -win, it's, it's like it's the whole thing is one big reality game show, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Oh, anyway, so the answers, give us the give us the go on, give us the clue. I haven't got an give idea. Go on, give me the clue then again. Right. Well, do you want to say who the winner is or no? Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's hear the answers. Uh, first, first clue was uh, if you get a bulb when it's young, you yeah. look after it and that you teach it stuff. Yeah. What's going on there? Go yeah. on. The initial was R. Yeah. Right. That was that was razor light. All right. Raise a light, you raise a light. Raise yeah. A light. Okay. Kinda works. Yeah, Second it didn't matter one. what sort of bulb it was then. <laughs> it was very mm. Sure. Uh, it mind. Go on. People have a problem doing this when they get home from a night out drinking. Yeah. What's the problem they're having? They have a problem getting the key in. Getting the key in, that key in, key in, key in. That's the... That's awful. Works. That doesn't count. Works. Key in. Key right. in. It's keen. It's yeah, keen. It's one to... Right. Awful. Um, awful, one, awful, awful. I had a vision of that Chinese flu. Yeah. Uh, that, the initial I was C, that was Caesars. Caesars, Caesars, Caesars. They managed to get that as well. Who's Dream. I love the fact that even he knows they managed to get that as well. Did anyone get all three? Yeah, a few people That's did. terrible. Okay, who's the first one? Who's I don't first? know what it says about XFM and its listeners that people are getting these answers, right? I know. Go on then. I mean, horrific. But anyway, we're gonna give it, and he goes forward, as I say, for the big pri the big prizes in uh, six weeks' time. It's Paul in Bookham. Where well done, well done, Paul Bookham, but also he does get, um, the uh, complete series of, uh, Alias, League of Gentlemen, That Rock Gods album. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty good, but open water on DVD and a chance to win all those prizes. Brilliant. Yeah. Coming up next, a cork smacking a bald man yeah. on the bumps mm. really hard. London, it's your city. XFM 104.9 playing Green Day. Uh, the studio's falling apart. I know, his microphone broke. Their I'm mind broke. Rick, I don't know why uh, Lindauer is the sparkling wine. <laughs> what would be associated with this shambles of a show? It is falling apart. This is awful, this studio. It's got to be fixed. Right? Right now, Carl, come on here. It's the time where I'm going to. Let a cork off. Do you want to film this, Steve? Yeah, the website? That'll be available that on the website next week. RickyGervais.com. So see Carl getting hit. One bloke suggested we leave the metal cap on because it's get a better pitch. Mm -hmm. But we'll take that. <laughs> He's taking. Let's get the Wait. camera ready. Get the camera ready. Ready? So if you just joined us, um, we are yeah. using some Lindauer's sparkling wine <laughs> to basically, well, what can I say? We fire a cork at Carl's round right, ready? head. Ready? Hang on, hang on a sec, let me just put the headphones on. Alright, film this then. Okay. He's in position, look. Just firing right. up. Okay, Carl, Carl, come on there so we can see your head a little bit. I want, we want to get the noise, the microphone there. Right, ready? Hold on. Good. So you're just right. doing it. Hold on. Now, it's in position. <laughs> what if it... it oh. Ready? Yep. Oh, God, it... Oh! No! <laughs> 
Oh, it's like it's like jackass. <laughs> did it hurt? Did it hurt me? What do you mean? Did it hurt you? I sort of just. I... It. I went off. It went off course. Did it? Just glanced. Did it? Right, Linda, are you going to send us um, eight more bottles, please? <laughs> yeah, we're going to get this right. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Homesick. Kings of convenience. Beautiful. Yeah, On XFM 104.9. Well, that's nearly the end of our first of six shows, I'm our just summertime back to special. Some of, the, some of the highlights, Rick, so far today. I don't know what you've made of it. We, we Finger up the arse. Finger up the arse. Testicles early on. Uh, um, Orientals don't age very well. Bit of, Kent, bit of racism. Bit of racism with the uh, Germany's full of cants. Yeah, that, that was our That isn't swearing. Um, um, cork, cork on the air, champagne down the electrical <laughs> works. <laughs> So yeah. good. Just to, the, the finale is uh, it's monkey news, obviously. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, chimpanzee, that monkey news, yeah. Well, there isn't. Uh, I've been away, haven't I? Oh, uh, there's been no monkey news. You can't get. No, no, but I haven't had, had a proper chance to sort of, you know. Uh, Carl, your monkey news is of spurious tales from the 17th <laughs> century sometimes. So let's have one of those. No, let's have a monkey that, who dressed as Zorro and they thought he was uh, a woodsman, but when they took his head off, he was only he was a four foot hairy chimp. <laughs> let's have one of those ridiculous stories. Well, we've we've done that though. But uh, do you want to go back on some of the ones? Oh, for sort of just what is the monkey one? news? There must have been some monkey news this right. week. The only thing that sort of stood out, do you know, like they're having problems. You're just making this up. Where's not... your information? Where's the piece of paper? Where's the document? What is this? Because I've been away, so I haven't got right, anything. Right, let's just hit, let's, 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 but let's it's hear bad it enough out. when he's reading it, he gets it wrong. When he's just riffing, it's going to be absolute twaddle. Let's hear it out. Right, do you know, like they're having problems getting new new um, people to be policemen? Oh, for... go on. They've uh, in America. They're taking them on to, uh, sort of join the SWAT team. <laughs> They've taken what on? Some little monkeys. Okay. Uh, giving them walkie talkies and all that. And, uh. Well, they can't talk. <laughs> they're just walkies. They don't have to. <laughs> yeah, they're giving them some walkies. What do you no, mean? What, what was. being given commands and that. And, uh, they go. Well, so it's one way. They, they tell them they've got the little thing well, strapped to them. They're good at, like, Getting into small, sort of, you know, small places and that, and sort of, you know, cracking stuff and all that. Like I say, it's just half a story I just picked up on. That's not a story. Well, what do you want? Monkey news. Well, I'll, I'll get some better stuff next week, but I've literally like got off a plane. This is the ago. worst. Uh, this is one of the worst shows we've ever done. And that's saying something, Rick. This we've done some tripe. <laughs> this is nothing. And to end with the the police in America have given monkeys walkie talkies. That's nothing. That is a disgrace. And mm. what do you mean that you've not had enough time to prepare? We've been off air for eighteen months. Yeah. yeah what? There's been no accumulated monkey news in that time. It's got to keep it fresh, though, hasn't it? <laughs>